my name is Johnny Silva. I, I work at King's College University in London. Um, I work within the IT department and I'm the Head of Education Services and Solutions. Uh, my team looks after our Moodle instance at the university. Just want to take uh, a moment to say apologies for not being at the talk live today, um, but hopefully I'll be able to cover most of this in this presentation. Um, I'm going to be talking about our scalable uh, platform uh, and our journey on this Moodle instance. First off, I'll talk off with the uh, overview. Um, we're going to be talking about a few areas. First off, I'll start off with talking about a little bit about our university. Um, then I'll go over our infrastructure overview, um, what we did in our testing in our go live, uh, and then what we're currently doing in terms of uh, improvements. So first, I just want to give you a little bit of history about our university. Uh, we were founded in 1829 and we have over 35,000 students. Um, we are based over five campuses uh, across London um, and we have a, a range of faculties um, that are supported within the university. So we have nine faculties um, ranging from arts and humanities to law, um, to medical studies, um, to engineering and social sciences. Um, we have a variety of courses at the university uh, and we are ranked in the top eight uh, in Europe. So I first wanted to start off by talking about uh, our traffic on our Moodle instance. Um, you'll see that the graph that's um, slowly populating um, is just loading up our page views over the course of an academic year. And what you can see is uh, over the last couple of academic years, you can see that our traffic has pretty much been um, steady and it's been growing um, since our student numbers have been increasing. But like most places, uh, COVID happened and you'll see um, shortly that when COVID did happen, um, we saw a huge spike in traffic. So you can see here um, we had uh, about a 75 percent spike in traffic uh, over the academic year. And then going into the following subsequent years that continued to grow um, and has only gotten bigger and bigger. As you can see, the numbers are rising. We need to act fast to make sure that the system was uh, a lot more stable. Um, but before um, I start talking about that, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the history. Um, we started off in the University of London's data centre in September 2012. Um, and as you can see, um, at that particular point, we didn't have the beefiest of uh, VM. So, you know, four CPUs and four gig of RAM uh, on both the database. Um, and the, the web front end was absolutely fine. Um, but as you can, um, as most of you know now, uh, that wouldn't be enough um, for the amount of traffic that uh, sites are getting these days. Um, we were in the, the data center for about uh, nine years um, and then the pandemic happened um, and the data center was at the end of life. Um, we were looking at uh, moving to the cloud anyhow, um, but the data center didn't have capacity. So we had to do this move a lot quicker than what we uh, expected it to do. Um, so it took us about three months to move from the, uh, the data center into the cloud. However, that was just the start of the, the problems that we would end up facing. Um, when we did do the cloud move, um, there was a lot more in terms of the, the traffic uh, and the site being constantly used uh, a lot higher rate than um, what we kind of expected um, going forward. So a year later, um, we decided to have a look at moving to an even higher spec VM. So we had a look at two different series of VMs. Um, one was called the F series within uh, Azure and the other was called the E series. Um, we ended up doing some load testing on that and we ended up going with the E series. And as you can see here, um, it was quite well over spec with 96 CPUs and 672 gigabytes of RAM. So we had one web front end and one database um, side of things. Um, but in essence, um, when it was a very busy parts of the site, then yeah, it was a great VM to have. Um, we never had any outages uh, when we moved to the E96, which is what we had started to have problems with when we moved to the cloud. We had a couple of outages um, just due to spikes. Um, but effectively, um, it was quite overscaled for, for the site. And so when we had weekends or um, non-teaching periods, the site was barely using one to 5% of the resources that were available to it. 
So um, we t undertook a, another piece of work to have a look at evolving the infrastructure into um, more flexible. Um, so uh, effectively, it was more to respond to the, the traffic that we had. So um, we had a lot of data from uh, the previous slide, which I showed you around the Google Analytics. Um, we have the data that goes hour by hour, day by day, month by month. And so what we did was we worked with our hosting partners, CoSector, um, to have a look at this level two architecture, to have a look at that load balance uh, infrastructure. So that way we could have a more responsive site um, for our end users. So uh, effectively, we have uh, pre-scaling in place now. So um, we have sort of a small, medium, large um, setup depending on times of the year. And um, we have sort of a calendar using that Google Analytics data of how we scale things up. Um, we did do some testing around um, sort of live scaling, um, but the, the problems that we saw around that was it took a little bit too long to, to go from that sort of transient window to straight away getting that VM uh, up and running uh, into the pool. It was taking, um, in effect, in the Azure side of things, up to a minute. Um, and most of you know that um, some of these spikes um, can, can go away within a minute. So um, that the pre-scaling um, is there to kind of mitigate as, as best as possible. But we also have um, scaling if needs be, if there, there is a big jump in the traffic. Um, just to show that we do have um, full disaster recovery replication on the site. So um, you can see here um, we, we do have full replication in a different uh, Azure area just in case um, the data center goes down. Numbers. Um, we did um, some testing with our partners at Inviews, and we had a look at three big sets of tests. Um, one was around sort of the login cycle, uh, one was about quizzes, and one was about assignments. Uh, I'll come on to some of the details uh, in the next slide, but uh, it's always good to kind of have a look at the data um, so we could have a look. So, you know, on average, the, the amount of transactions when a, an Office 365 user logs in is three transactions per user. And so if you've got 5,000 users on the site, you have to extrapolate those numbers. And the same with quizzes and the assignments, you know, you've got to look at the different states of those particular quizzes and those assignments. So when the quiz opens, when students navigate to the quiz, during the quiz attempts, the submissions, the auto marking, the quiz closing, all of those put an extra load onto the system that we need to have a look at. And the same goes for the assignments, um, you know, when the, the assignments uploaded, when the file is uploaded, accepting the terms and conditions, the grading and so on and so forth. And what we wanted to do is want to smooth out any bottlenecks um, in the system so that we, we have really high availability uh, and a good student experience. Um, as I said, we conducted three tests um, to begin with. So the main three tests that we undertook was uh, a load test, a step up load test and a quiz stress test. So the, the first load test was just effectively um, users logging into the system. Um, so these were real Microsoft accounts that we had, so not local accounts. We wanted to mimic the behavior as closely as possible. Um, and so we sort of staggered up 1,000, 2,500, 3,500, 4,250, and then 5,000 users into the system uh, within a one minute time period. Um, we did this solely because we do have uh, large assessments um, and we do have big opening windows where there are that many people logging onto the site to, to get one of those assessments up. We didn't have any issues um, when we did that. So it was just a log on uh, and view dashboard. Um, nothing came out of that particular piece, but we could see that the system was able to handle the traffic well. And then looking up at stepping up um, the load test, that was looking at sort of um, some background traffic in the um, in the Moodle side of things. So people viewing courses, accessing resources, doing quizzes, doing assignments and so on and so forth. And again, we didn't see any major issues in the new infrastructure uh, when we came to do some load testing. Again, we did the same scaling thing around 1000 users all the way up to 4,250 users. Um, and we did that over a two hour period. Finally, uh, we did a quiz stress test. And again, we tested these quizzes uh, for different groups. So we had uh, groups at 250, 500 and 750. Um, and again, we never found any issues uh, around this, but we've had problems in the past around uh, how quizzes have been um, set up or um, laid out that have caused problems. But um, when we did our testing this time around on this new infrastructure, we never had any issues. 
Uh, going on to the output, so this is just one of the um, pieces from the slide deck that InViews provided us, but um, as you can see, we've got response times, uh, hits per second, bytes through over time, and then we've got um, our Atatus uh, dashboard, uh, which shows us sort of our app deck scores and the throughput on the site. Um, I don't have time to cover everything, but um, what we were looking for was making sure that the response time from the SERP and the client side um, were good and we didn't have any bottlenecks um, on the site and the user experience was um, acceptable um, in terms of the, the times of the page loads. Finally, just to uh, wrap up, um, what we're doing next, um, what we did try to uh, conduct sort of during the load testing um, in real life, um, we found that the reprofiling needs to be done slightly uh, around the load testing. We saw that the data um, currently now, um, that the way that the sort of the file share in the background is working um, needs a bit more work because it wasn't tested in the same way um, that the live site is currently um, utilizing. And so we need, want to make our testing a bit more accurate here. Um, so um, we're, we're just having a look and seeing what we can do uh, in this particular area. Uh, going on to sort of pre-scaling, um, what we'll be doing is we'll be just reviewing the data that we had from our Google Analytics and what we kind of came up in that small, medium and large um, piece to, to get a little bit more um, granular in the data to see um, what we want to do going forward. We have a little bit overscaled um, the, the nodes to begin with, just so that we have that comfort zone um, and just so we understand uh, the numbers so that we can make some tweaks going forward. Uh, and finally, costs. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the, the cost numbers um, to, to me just yet, um, but we effectively um, believe we're going to make some cost savings. They're not going to probably be um, extremely large, um, but what we will see is um, we're, we're probably going to make some good carbon footprint savings here um, because effectively those two VMs that we had were quite beefy um, and they weren't being utilized for the whole um, the whole academic year in the same way that they are during sort of semester one and semester two um, during our peak periods and our assessment periods. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, a huge thank you to our partners at CoSector, um, Paul, Thomas, uh, Josiah for helping us out with this and uh, our partners at Infuse, uh, Tushar and Nalin. Um, they, they really helped us in, in getting our, our journey through this and especially the, the KCL, our Christopher, uh, Martin, Josh and Rob. Um, thank you for all your help with uh, getting this working for us and um, improving our student experience. Um, I would love to take any questions, um, but I'm not there, obviously, so um, I will ask for my email to be put up uh, at the end. So if you've got any questions, feel free to drop me an email. But thank you for uh, attending.